Hey everyone, I love using games in the classroom. I often create a bunch of my own games for all sorts of different skills, but today I wanted to go ahead and share five fun and easy board games that you can use to practice math skills in K through two classrooms. If you are new here, my name is Susan Jones and I'm a former first grade teacher and K through two literacy teacher who now shares videos every Thursday and Sunday here on YouTube with teaching tips, ideas, and activities for teachers just like you. Let me grab those five games I wanna share with you. I'm going to share a little bit about how each one is played and how I like to use it for teaching different math skills. Let's get started. My son Calvin loves math. He's like a little math whiz. I don't know where it came from, but Santa brought him a few math games this year that he is absolutely loving. Now he is four and a half and in pre-K, but he's definitely working on kindergarten and even some beginning edition skills that you would work on in first grade. So the first game we got him is called Zingo One Two Three, and it's number bingo. This game is for two to six players, so it has six different boards. And I love it because it's double-sided, so you can differentiate this with your students and here on one side students have just the numbers and the number word for them to try to match and then there's also another side they can just flip it over and it is beginning addition facts and again there's no numerals here these are just pictures that they can add up and have an addition sentence to try to find there are all these little number tiles and basically you're just going to flip this down you will get two numbers and students have to look at the numbers and see if it matches anything on their board so it's great because you can have all students playing the green side all at one time you could have them all playing the red side at one time or you can differentiate it some with the green some with the red the numbers are going to be the same and it's played just like bingo i like to play it instead of three in a row i like to play until whoever covers their entire board first is the winner all right the second board game i want to share is actually a card game and it is called sleeping queens the box looks like this i actually think it's only like seven or eight dollars i'm going to link all of the games down in the description so you can look at them if you're interested in any one of these but this game is a really Really fun one where again it's a card game and so students have to try to collect all the different queens there's a couple different rules involved but one of the rules for trading in cards to get new cards is you have to look for addition equations that equal 10 so if anything in your hand equals 10 you'll be able to trade it in let me show you what I'm talking about now I'm not gonna go into all of the details on how to play the whole game because if you decide to get this then you'll have to read it and learn how to play. But the main idea is that here are all of the queens and those are laid out. And the goal is to be the first player to collect five of the queens. And there's a few different ways you can do that. In your hand, you will have all sorts of different cards, but you really want to get cards like these, a king, because a king is what helps you turn over a queen. If you have a king, you can collect a queen like so and keep it in your pile. But in order to get kings, you'll have to get them from this pile right here. First of all, if you have any sort of matching numbers like I do here with two tens, if you have matching cards, you can actually take both tens and put them in the discard pile and take two new cards. And then another thing you can do, which is another reason I love it for students, is you can actually if you have five cards in your hand and you have um, an addition equation. One of the cool things about this game is that you're constantly looking for addition equations within your hand. So if I had an eight, a two, and one of these tens, pretend this is a two, I could actually say, oh, well eight plus two equals 10. I get to turn in all three of these cards and get three new cards and you know your hope hopefully you're getting a king in your hand. So again, I didn't really explain exactly how to play, but it's a very simple game to follow and so much of the game revolves around math, which makes it a great kind of practice game for at school and at home. All right, game number three that I love is called Left Center Right. And I'm actually not going to talk too much about this game because I did an entire video on how I would use it with math skills and literacy skills, but I'm gonna put that, the video looks like this, and I will link this down in the description. Left Center Right is just a really fun game to play on its own. Again, very inexpensive. I got this at Target for a couple dollars. So the cooperative and fun aspect is 
totally there for like indoor recess. So if you want to add a couple different math skills to it, just check out that video and it'll give you plenty of ideas. All right, the fourth game I want to share is called Clumsy Thief. This is another game we got for my son Calvin this Christmas. The cover looks like this. Of course, I can't find it right now. It's probably somewhere up in his room, but it is Clumsy Thief Jr. I guess there are a few other ones. And the premise of this game is a raccoon came and he took all the crops, I think, from the farm. And basically it's a quick, fast paced card game where students have to try to make tens to collect and stack all their cards. It's really fun because students get to keep collecting any cards. So if they have like a three on top of their pile and they see a seven, they can go ahead and grab it. And they can grab it not only from the middle deck where everyone's grabbing from, but if one of their other players is playing and they have a seven on top, they can take it and add it to their pile. It is just a fun, like I said, fast paced game that's really great for students making 10. I actually just looked this up on my phone right here because I knew Clumsy Thief was a junior one that we played. And I guess Clumsy Thief, the original, is a very similar fast paced card game for money. So if you have first or second grade students working on coin identification and adding up sums, that would be a good one to check out. I'll go ahead and link that down below as well. All right, game number five is a little bit different. Instead of working on number sense, addition and subtraction, this one works on logic and getting students to kind of build things the way they see them, kind of those beginning STEM activities. It is called Castle Logics. It looks like this. And as you can see here, students will simply pull a card and they have to try to build the castle to match what is on the card. There's 48 different challenges inside that game and they get increasingly more difficult. So I think you can pick easier cards and harder cards. Castle Logic is the one that my boys like, but there's also a few other examples. There's this truck one that definitely looks like more for pre-K students where they have to put the blocks inside the truck to match. And then there's also Camelot Jr. that looks like this, which is similar to the castle one I first shared, where here again, they have to go ahead and match the tower. What's cute about both this Camelot and the castle one is once students have actually gone ahead and solved the logic puzzle and made the puzzle actually look the way it's supposed to, they come with little characters so students can use their imagination and get to actually play with the things that they've built. That last game is slightly more expensive than the other ones, but all the other ones are in the around the eight, $9 range. If you happen to have any sort of like wish list for your classroom, or if you have any extra money that your district is looking to spend money on, games are just a great way for students to practice working together, practice their cooperation skills, practice winning and losing, and also throw in a few fun math skills as well. So there are five of my favorite board games to play in a classroom. I wanted to share a few different ones that I haven't seen shared too often. So so if any of these were new to you and you're excited about them, drop them down in the comments below and let me know. Also let me know if you have any other math board games you like playing that I didn't mention here. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you did so I know. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new week's video. Don't forget I drop a new video every Thursday and Sunday and I will see you in the next one. Bye.